Plate tectonics is one of the most powerful theories in geology. It explains the movement which we currently measure and observe in continents, the formation of mountains, the formation of so many of the rocks which we find, the age of the seafloor and the patterns of uh, paleomagnetism observed in the seafloor, and so many other aspects. When it was first proposed uh, in 1915, the idea of continental drift was supported by the shape of many continents which seem to fit together and then a geological study of their rocks showing that there were similarities on continents which today are far apart such as the similarities in Gondwana uh, which uh, would only be answered by their having a connection at some point. We now know that there was a late Paleozoic Ice Age which occurred throughout the Carboniferous and Early Permian um, which affected primarily the southernmost continents. And evidence of glacial activity, this would be glacial sediments known as till, and then striations in bedrock as boulders were pushed ahead of advancing glaciers. Uh, these occurred on continents uh, which are uh, largely tropical. So they affect southern South America, South Africa, India, Australia, and also present on Antarctica. If these continents had been in their modern positions throughout time, ice sheets would not have been expected here. They would not have been expected to move over oceans and then begin in warmer regions. There was certainly no global ice age at the same uh, period. In North America, uh, warm coal swamp forests were laying down coal beds. So this was another piece of evidence uh, that continents were once joined. Another piece of evidence uh, known from the early 1900s was the distribution of many fossils. There was a primitive seed plant, Glossopterus, named for its tongue-shaped leaves, which is known from the southern land masses where it was prominent in coal formations. Uh, this would not have uh, easily spread across oceans to reach South America, Antarctica, Australia, India, and Africa. Um, and was much more easily explained by the fact that these continents had been joined. A small freshwater reptile was known from both South America and Africa that would not have been predicted to have crossed an ocean. The synapsid reptiles were known uh, dispersed along southern continents, such as the cynodont uh, Cynonathus. The therapsid Lystrosaurus is not only known from diverse southern land masses, but northern one as well, as suggesting that there was once a supercontinent joining all land masses, uh, given that Lystrosaurus is the most common land vertebrate from the early Triassic. 